Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this Houdini tutorial we are iteratively going to subdivide quads based on the contrast of an underlying image. So let's just set up a new Houdini session and create a grid. We will make it one by one in size and use a resolution of 512 to get started. Next we are going to colorize the points by using an attribute from map node and we will just load in some image from our hard drive. Now I don't care about it being stretched or flipped. We will just want to find out the local contrasts by blurring the colors 40 times and compare the colors of the sharp image against the blurred one. So I will <clears throat> create a float value called diff which is measuring the distance between the current color and the color of the second input. We can create an attribute out of this and visualize it by pressing X. So you can see that the diff node is um, capable, excuse me, the <coughs> visualize node is uh, capable of, when we put input one here, um, of showing the contrast. But we want to ramp this a little so we can define the contrast ourselves. So we create this ramp based on diff and click on this little icon here so we can dial in the contrast. So next let's scatter some points based on the diff value. It contains the colors and the next step would be to iterate over a grid of size one by one again, which can maybe start with three by three rows and columns. So we have four quads to get started with, and this would work like that. We uh, first of all want to create a for loop, and we can execute this, let's say six or seven times. Now, to save us a lot of coding, we will um, use quads and points and bounce between their attributes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find out in which quad those points lie. I can do this by using a function called xyzdist, which is asking for, um, in my case, the other geometry stream, starting from or, yeah, our point position. And it should return the primitive it hit, and it will also return its intrinsic UV coordinates of each primitive. The search distance can be kept extremely low because yeah, the points are really sitting right on the grid. Now it complains that it doesn't have prim hit and uvw hit defined. And this function will basically fill those parameters. All right. So um, now we should have a result for prim hit. We can turn this into an attribute by typing i at prim hit. 
equals prim hit. And now it should show up here for every point. There should be either 0, 1, 2 or 3. Again, we can visualize this by simply pressing X. And this time we want to know about prim hit, which can't be colorized, but should be a marker instead. And you can see all those numbers, all the zeros, ones, twos and threes in here. According to the primitive numbers, you can see here 0, 1, 2 and 3. All right. Now, make sure that we are asking this question in which quad are you positioned for each iteration. And next, when we have basically a list of um, these quads, we will run over all points. Excuse me, we will run over all primitives, but we are going to ask the points. So let's connect the second input to our list. And now we are asking the points whether they find an attribute value in the second input within the point class. And it should be called prim hit. We are looking for our current primitive number and we're happy with the first result it finds. So this should return a point. Now if it did, we can create a group which I call diff for divide every time it has not found a point. So basically, um, or let's put it differently. Yeah, if, if it has found some kind of point in the second input that had the same uh, primitive number, then we will say you need to be subdivided. And we can do so by creating a subdivide node, setting it to bilinear and putting it in there. And then we restrict it to the diff group. So you see it does um, subdivide it. And you can also just reduce this to two by two. So we're starting off with a uh, just one quad that gets subdivided. Next, we are trying to get our color back. So let's call the next node just recolor. And the second input can be connected to the blurred color, maybe. We can also use attrib from map, but maybe it's a little nicer to have um, not a perf pixel perfect result. And this is uh, another function. Um, it's called near point, which is returning the closest point from the center of our primitives. And we want to get its color. So we can do this by using the point function on the second input again. And we want PT near color. And we can apply this by going V at CD equals color near. So this is our quad tree image. You can see where nothing is happening. We get rather large quads and where there's a lot of uh, detail, it gets finer. So this is what it would look like. And what I'd like to get across is the color to a um, another context, namely the COP context, where we can save out these images and actually yeah, have a pixel map. 
So let's go to the image context and we can create an image network there, which will just use a VOPCOP2 generator. And in there we can delete both nodes and just create a snippet. This will save us from yeah, winding and connecting nodes like crazy. And first, before we start coding, we will just set the image canvas, which you can see here, to uh, a suitable size. I choose a quadratic size, but we're independent of pixels here because we are going to use the UV coordinates of this geometry. So let's just apply a UV texture node here, which should Con uh, yeah, create these kinds of uh, this kind of UV map. All right, this should do. Now let's go over to our compositing context. Inside our snippet, we will first define some image position, which will consist of x and y, and the third component will be just zero. Now, we want to create some color, which we can, for the time being, set to the image position. And then we want to assign to red, green and blue our color. So this will turn our composition into gradients, uh, which are basically representing um, the texture coordinates or uh, the image canvas coordinates. So instead of um, displaying this, we want to UV sample our SOP geometry. So you can see here, it is asking for a geometry and it wants to know which attribute you want to read in. That's the color. It is using UV uh, in SOPs and we are searching on this based on our image position. So, um, of course, it cannot find the geometry, so we need to use a parameter by the same name. And connect this to our snippet. Now we have to go up and just drag in our parameter, which has to be set to geometry as well. So let's go up again and now drag the out node inside and put OP um, <clears throat> double dot in front. So you see we transferred this image. Now we should be able to interactively um, yeah, change this. So when I go back to my SOP, SOPs, I can now play around with the iterations. When I lower them, I get a pixelated image and local detail will be adapted here. You can also change the number of points. So let's lower this to 200. And you can also play around with the contrast of the image, which should also result in different images. Thank you for watching.